Hello, good evening, and welcome to another episode of Become a Better Man. My name is Tunde Disu, and we are continuing with the series that we've been talking about, we've been looking at for the past three or four weeks, about three weeks now. We've been considering of having guests on this platform to talk about mental health and mental health, mental illnesses that people are dealing with. And so we call it mental health conversation, because as you know, I'm not a doctor, I'm not even in any of the medical fields, but we have experts, we have friends and, and contacts and colleagues that are experts in this field. And so over the past three or four weeks, three weeks we've had them, we had two guests, you know, three guests on the platform. We, first we had Nancy and Rodney to talk about depression, then we tried to have Shedrach talk about anxiety and the whole thing just didn't work out. And so last week we had Daisy who spoke to us about stress. But I did promise that uh, Shedrach is not going to get away with it that easily. So we've, we've, we've succeeded in bringing him back and I can confirm he's here right now with us. So without much further ado, I am happy to introduce our guest tonight, Shedrak Tukura. Thank you, Shedrak, and here is Shedrak. Yes, finally, I'm here. It's a long way oh, to go. Oh, yeah, we got you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good to have you. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been like, is this going to happen? Is this going to happen? But hey, we're and here today we... and, uh, and it's good yeah, to we... have you. Thank you so much for taking the time to be part of this yeah. program. Thank you for inviting uh, like so I said, you. like I said, we've had different friends uh, on the platform and today we have Shedrak with us and he's going to be talking to us about anxiety. I'm going to let you introduce yourself and then we'll take it from there. Okay, so my name is Shadrach Tukura. Um, I'm a mental health practitioner. And, um, and yeah, that's, uh, that's who I am. So mental health is um, it's, um, it's an interesting uh, department and it's an interesting uh, topic if we choose to talk about it. So everyone, the, every day, um, as we go on, it's all about mental health. Um, people will not understand that part, perhaps uh, if they don't know, if they don't know what um, what the mental health is about. So, so yeah. There we go. Bring myself by right there. We go. Thank you so much, uh, Shadra. Today we are going to be talking about anxiety. Uh, I tried to do something, but I knew I was just, I wasn't cut out for it. <laughs> so I am going to say, because you are a mental health pra practitioner, mm. especially because this is your line of duty, this is your experience, this is your area of expertise. Can you tell us, first of all, before we go into anxiety, can you tell us more about mental health or mental illness itself. The reason I say that is because when people hear mental illness, especially people from where we are from, the first thing they're thinking about is that man in the village that is walking about naked. And so people think if you are not like that, then you don't have mental illness. So you yeah. tell us, please, about what mental illness is and whether some people are well, it's we are all susceptible mm. to have it. We most of us do have it actually, we just don't know. So can you yes. tell us about mental health first, please? Uh well I would I mean using a basic and a layman's term, uh yeah. mental health mental health is our way of life. Mental health is our day to day activity, mental health is our day to day living, mental health is our day to day decision-making mental health is our day-to-day -day, um 
thinking, actions, and doing. Um, I mean, we can go into details about, you know, a, a kind of um, uh, a full definition of what, what mental health would be like. But um, as, as we go on, the basic term I've used now, we'll probably get to understand what, what exactly we're talking about. Statistics shows that one in four people um, have mental health problem. Now they might say, oh, okay, I am that two, three in between that don't have the mental health problem. But if, if you get to understand what that mental health is all about, then you might, you know, maybe perhaps at the end of this program, people might get to sit back and think, oh, okay, I, I think um, I sort of understand what, what this is about. So like you said, not the people that um, that we hear about in the village who are um, who are stripped bare uh, or who are talking um, out of context. Those are what people classify as the mental health problem, but it's, it's way beyond all of that. Um, and wow. as we go on talking about the anxiety, we we'll also, you know, get to understand this is a part of mental health that we all go through. But for some people, they don't even understand that is what it's all about. That's so, interesting. Yeah. You just said something now. You said one in four of us, mm -hmm. one in every four people have mental health or mental illness or dealing with something to do with, with their mental faculty. Mm -hmm. I think that awareness is, it's good to have that awareness because we've all seen, we've all been, we've all witnessed people with maybe depression, uh, maybe panic attack, maybe trauma experience. And so we, we yeah. society has a way of labeling them. Yeah. Or he's having one of those things. Oh, that's yeah. We do have that. Uh, this about this time of the of the of the afternoon and all of that. But yeah. to find out to, to have the understanding that maybe one in four of us have it, then mm -hmm. tells me before you throw a stone or before you point a finger, maybe you should turn it backward and, and point it to yourself. Yeah. Then we're gonna talk about anxiety. I mean, yeah, anxiety. Can you tell us what is anxiety? Please. Okay. Uh, just some, before we go there, just something that you mentioned that um, I just want to talk about just briefly. Talked about the labeling. That's, that's one thing that people um, shy away from or people don't want to um, get into because they think, okay, if I come out with this um, problem, as it may yeah. be, then I will be labeled as uh, not normal. I will be labeled as not normal. So rather than me not being normal, let me leave in leave this uh, problem in silence and not let anyone know. In that case, they they start they start to suffer in silence, as 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 the word may be. So that labeling makes people not to come out to even want to talk about any problem that they are going through because of that fear of labeling. And when they, talk, when they talk about normal, what is normal? What is normal for me can be different for what is normal for you. So there is no specific thing as being normal, so to speak. So you might like something just because I don't like that thing does not make me different from you. It just makes our, makes our, differences, um, differences. it just makes us different. That's what makes yeah. us different anyway. Exactly. So, you know, so moving on to, to anxiety. Um, again, using a, a lay term, um, it's a normal human feeling um, of fear or panic. So okay. that's, 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 like I said, it's a layman term. So we can all understand that word anxiety. Um, I mean, people can say, oh, no, 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 I don't have any of those problems, you know, because they still classify that as a mental health problem. So I don't have it because it's a mental health problem. But everyone goes through those, the anxiety. It's a normal human feeling or fear uh, of panic. So, and, and this happens when, uh, when we go through some stressful uh, situations or, th or th uh, stressful periods. Now, these periods can be uh, time, times when we get new job, uh, when we're going for an interview, more like it. So you, you, get, you, you get anxious for things like that. So again, 
that's one thing everyone goes through does not mean that um, you have a problem per se. Uh, for a, for some people, it's exams. So when they when it's about time for an exam, they start feeling anxious, which is normal. Because everyone goes through this period. I know that feeling. <laughs> yeah, for some people, is um, is driving. Uh, when they're going for the driving test, they start feeling anxious. You know, I'm just using those basic terms so people will understand that, oh, okay, so this is what it's actually all about. For some yeah. people, it might even just be relationships. So, you know, they meet someone and they're anxious about the outcome of the relationship. Those are those sort of basic things. So that feeling is what I'm just trying to establish so we understand that it's not, it's, we don't look at it like it's one huge sort of um, a thing that, oh, only some elite people have it because they have this mental health problem. It happens to everyone, um, you know. So the only the only issue with that um, problem now is then when he now it, it now prolongs to a point that it now affects you so bad that it affects your day to day life. Now, if you go through if you go through that anxiety in a short period of time, that is normal. But when it gets okay. to a point where you cannot really control it. Mm. Then it, it then becomes a problem. That's that's the, the line that's um, that 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 then becomes that problem that people then see as the mental health problem, which they now think, oh, this person is different. This person has a mental health problem, whereas it just started from having that feeling and then developed to a point where they can't really control it because they don't know how, or they they've seen uh, different ways of how people have, have controlled or. Uh, dealt with it, which you know, maybe we might go through that again in the yeah, this yeah, we will do. No, we will yeah. do. So, I know you mentioned things like when you're going for an interview and you like, or you're going for your driving tests, mm -hmm. or you're going to approach a lady or a, a, a male. It's coming towards you if you are a lady and you think, please don't, don't, don't even think, just go past me. <laughs> and so we all have that. But what are some of the, and you said sometimes it then crosses to a point where it is now affecting your day to day, everyday life. At that instant, at that point going forward, what are some of the symptoms that we will see that we can notice? people to know that this is not just the yeah yeah the, the state fright this is now an issue this what are is some of the symptoms yeah so so that when it now gets to that point where it becomes severe that's when yeah. it becomes an anxiety disorder so yeah. getting to the, getting to that point the symptoms that people would then start having will become racing thoughts so your mind is just, you know, constantly you're just, you're thinking about something um, that is probably not there. You're just thinking about solving problems that maybe the problem is far-fetched. You're thinking about, oh, what, what, am I, what am I going to do now? You know, looking for solutions for things that you, 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 you know, you can't really control. Um, but difficulty concentrating, uh, that's another one that, that people go through. Um, they can't really focus on one thing. Like I said earlier, they're thinking about one thing. The next thing, their mind jumps jumps onto another. So they start having, with some people, they might have this anxiety attack or the panic attack. Um, uncontrolled um, uncontrolled of thinking, with, which you know, I've mentioned earlier. Feeling yeah. irritable. So, so people might, might talk to you and you, and you just snap because you, you, know, you, you, you get irritable easily. You get upset. You get angry just, just like that. Um, lack of sleep is another one. Uh, wow. You know where you find yourself. You find yourself either tossing and turning in bed because your mind going back to the racing thoughts. Your mind is just you know just moving about. Um, and you and you're, you you the other thing you can be get is um, heightened alertment. So you know you might be you might you might be somewhere and you hear a noise and you just flinch. You just don't. Oh, what's that? What's that? You know what's going on? What's happening? You know those those sort of feelings that you start ha you start having, um, even appetite as well. You can you can have change in appetite. So something that you enjoyed eating, you might the food might even be in front of you, but you just don't have that appetite to eat. 
you know, for some people, it's comfort eat. They, you know, it gets to the point where they then comfort eat. For some, they don't even eat at all. So you start having this sort of um, disorders, so to speak, and this sort of symptoms. When those things start happening, then you need to, you know, you need to then sit back and say, oh, hang on a sec. I think there's something wrong here. There's a problem here, which I think I need it's to... Gone beyond, it's gone beyond the... You know, you know, it's gone beyond the, oh, I'm feeling anxious, which can last for just a short period of time. And you're back to normal because of that that new events new activity in your life that you just feel okay but when you go through those those period then your body then the, the the adrenaline in your body then comes back to normal but when it doesn't come back to normal where you then start becoming more like a disorder where you can't really control those things those symptoms you start having those symptoms now when you start having those symptoms then you then know okay i'm gonna say you know this, this is not normal for me. There's a problem here, which I need to I need to actually deal with. So that's let that. me just yeah, thank you so much for that. I want to go back to something you mentioned earlier on about sleeping. Yeah. Uh, because sometimes this, I'm using myself as an example here. I know I am asleep. I know I am sleeping. But I know I'm not sleeping. Mm. I'm in bed, my eyes closed, maybe mm. snoring. But I'm just slightly, just tiny bit, I am conscious that I'm not sleeping. I'm conscious that I'm thinking. I'm conscious that there are things going on in my mind. Now, uh, I don't know if that is that can be classified as a, a of anxiety, maybe there's something that's keeping me up, or, or is that a different sleep disturbance or the, the different thing yeah. to what you said about sleeping? Yeah, I mean, there, there, are two, there are two symptoms that you just raised there. Um, you feel like you're sleeping, but you're not, but at the same time, it's like you're, you're having that racing thoughts. Yeah. So, so it's almost like the, the, the subconscious is there. But you're having that racing thoughts, which then affects your sleep. So in a point, you're thinking, okay, I'm in bed, I'm laying down, I feel like I'm sleeping, but I'm not. But my mind is racing. So those, those, in fact, that's the um, that's the mental um, uh, symptom because you have the physical and the mental symptom. Now the physical symptom, I can go into that later on. But th th those are the mental symptoms that you get with with all this other with all these points that I've mentioned. So you just think that, oh, okay, well, hang on a sec. You think you can still hear noises around, but at the same time, you feel like you're sleeping. But, you, yeah. you know, you then wonder, okay, okay, I, I, was I sleeping or wasn't I? Or what was that all about? So your mind is, is constantly racing, constantly thinking of what's not or what it is. Uh, and your body then flows with what your mind is, is put into it. So, yes, your body is telling you, okay, it's time to sleep. But your mind is saying, hang on, you can't sleep here because either this problem is not solved uh, for instance, let's say, let's talk about um, finances. Maybe you're yeah. in debt or the things that you need to do, and you're thinking, "How am I going to pay this debt? How am I going to do this?" You know, and you you go to bed and you think and you're sleeping. You're it's almost like half and half. You're half. You can see the red letter still you're flashing in your face. <laughs> exactly. But your subconscious is still working, thinking, "I'm going to okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to, this needs to be done." It gets to a point where it now comes. It now comes as a dream. Like, okay, but I dreamt like this was happening, but not so much of a dream, but that subconscious is still there, still trying to tell you that, hello, yes, I'm still here, my mind, the mind is still racing. <laughs> now, you said that is the, the mental symptoms, yeah. but there are physical symptoms. Can you mention a few of the physical symptoms, so, please? So some of the physical symptoms you could have is sweating. You know, you, you, you can begin to sweat where, you know, you just see people sweat. Now that now that's sweating, there can be other um, illnesses linked to linking to that. But with 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 the anxiety, sometimes you can have that that also physical symptoms where they sweat heavily. Um, they, you see them breathing heavily, you know, just panting like that because, you know, they're not sure what's going on, what they're going to do. Uh, for some people, it's dry mouth, you know, and this for. You know, a typical example of this you can see in like interviews as well. That's why sometimes for people who 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 know about interviews, when you go in there, they give you a glass of water to say, you know, have this so we can start with just in case you start having all these 
symptoms. <laughs> you know, or you go in with your own cup of water. Um, you know, those kind of things. So when you start prolonging, you start getting to a point where for some people it's hair loss. They start losing their hair. That's why they say you lose your hair over sleep. Um, so they start losing hair, for, you know, for, for, for things like that. Um, um, I think I mentioned uh, fast, you know, start palpitating, fast heartbeat. Um, yeah. Extreme tiredness. You just feel tired because your mind, your body has just been working constantly, trying to, you know, like I said, I talked about your, your the adrenaline. So you, you then feel exhausted because you've just exerted energy doing things. For some, it might be stomach ache. You know, they start having pains, um, start feeling sick. You know, feeling dizzy, feeling faint. Um, you know, those 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 are the kind of symptoms that when when you start having those things, you just need to sit down and check yourself. Um, you know, high for some, their blood pressure just shoots up, and you're wondering, oh, I'm going, what's what's going on? You don't have what's a problem here. Yeah. You, know, you don't have a blood pressure problem. How is this happening? So that, you know, just take a deep breath, long lasting deep breath can help calm yourself down. So th those, those are the physical symptoms that people can have, which people would not even perhaps know that is linked to their anxiety. Uh, some it could be shaking and they're not, they're not they, you know, they, you can see them hold a glass of water and the cup is just shaking in their arms and they're wondering, okay, I don't, I don't have any tremors, any um, illness that, that would warrant tremor. So why am I having this? So if they, if they understand those symptoms, uh, I mean, for me, sometimes, you know, the good thing about th this, my field, is that as much as I try to um, speak to some of my clients and help them in, in their mental health and help them how to act, I also reflect on myself because sometimes when I feel anxious for some reason or the other, you know, it should be, it should be um, how would I put it? It should be uh, very uh, wrong of me to practice uh, what I'm not, you know, to preach what I'm, what I don't practice. <laughs> what I'm practicing. So uh, I, I would need to uh, say, okay, you know what? This is what the problem is. And remember, this is what you tell your clients to do. So if you don't do the same, then you know you're just <laughs> yeah, right? you're doing it straight. So you just need to understand and recognize those things, which is which which is where people who do not have that awareness, that's the pro, that's where they fall in in in, in danger with. You need to recognize these things. And for me, sometimes it's just that deep breath. I just sit down and I exercise. So I think the exercise does, it goes a long way because with, with exercise, your body is able to um, take more pressure than, than, than usual. So when you exercise, you, you know, you use some sort of energy. Um, I mean, your endorphins and all that. So when, when pressure comes in, because your body is used to those sort of, um, high-end pressure, you can then, so for somewhat reason, handle um, 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 stress or handle um, anxiety even much better. Mm -hmm. Not that you'll be able to, you won't have it, but you'll be able to handle it much, much better. So, 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 yeah, those, those are the physical uh, symptoms. Okay, I just want to reach out to our audience because we can just sit here and talk and talk and talk. But the whole essence of this, this mental health conversation is number one, to bring awareness to the issue of mental health and to let people know that it's not specific to some people. We are all candidates. Like yeah. you said at the beginning, one in four of us, at one point in life, one in four of us is dealing with some mental, issue, mental health issues. So I'm, I want to advise, I want to encourage our viewers, if you have any question, if you have any, uh, how can I say it? If, you, if there's something you want to say concerning this topic that we're discussing tonight, please feel free to either send me an email, I've left my email address, or just put a comment on the video, on the, on the Facebook, we will pick it up and we'll talk about it because as much as we like to cover everything, we can't cover everything. So we need your yeah. input as viewers also to help us to be able to get through with all of this. 
Shadrach, we've talked about what is anxiety, we've talked about some of the symptoms, both in the mental symptoms and the physical symptoms. Mm -hmm. Now, is this something that can be treated? It can be treated, yes. It so can be treated. Tell us about the, the type of treatment that we, we can, one so, can expect. So, uh, some of the treatments that you can have uh, for some people, I mean, there, there, there's the um, there's the uh, psychology. You can you can have therapy uh, for some of these symptoms that you're having. Uh, for some for some people, it, it could be controlled with with medication. Uh, for some, it's probably maybe perhaps by both that you could combine um, to help you regulate or manage. This, this this symptoms um, I mean treatment can like I said can range from from psychology where they need to find out the the genesis of how this um, this whole thing started in the first place now for some of them it can be hereditary where um, you it, where I would use the word maladaptive behaviors where you've seen maybe perhaps you've seen family members or you've seen someone, um, go through this this period of anxiety um, or manic state or a depressive state, and along the line, you then have your own attack and have your own symptoms. Because you don't know how to deal with it, that's where the maladaptive behavior comes. You then reflect back to what you've seen in the past, and you then try to mimic such behavior thinking, okay, maybe this is how, or this is what I've seen uh, people, uh, how I've seen someone deal with it. Maybe this is how I need to deal with it myself. Um, so with therapy, it's, it's, it's a point where they, they, they start to dig, it, dig out those genesis of, okay, tell me about this thing. Um, tell me how we started. For some of it, it can be phobia. So for some people, you know, phobia can cause anxiety. So for you to then know how to deal with that phobia, you need to know where it all started from. Um, for some people, it can be OCD, um, where uh, people just tend to clean ex excessively. They tend to do things excessively, um, but that's their own way of managing this anxiety because maybe perhaps they've seen how people or family members have done it in the past and they now pick up those behaviors and put it to themselves and now use it to do their own, their own, you know, their own uh, form. For some, it's PTSD, uh, post-traumatic uh, stress disorder. So yeah. all this, this thing can actually cause this anxiety format that uh, because they don't know how to deal with it, for, for, for the PTSD, sometimes it could be flashback. That flashback can bring anxiety. But because they've not dealt with it in the past, um, it, it can be quite dangerous in future. Um, I can give an example of um, of, a, of a soldier who came back from war and he almost killed his wife because at night time he was having some flashbacks, thinking he was still in the war and he was str strangling his wife, thinking that he was um, he was fighting, fighting war. an enemy. Whoa! Fighting an enemy. So it was it was one of those my early cases of um of of my nursing training that you know that we came across this sort of um this this although I didn't meet with the soldier it was one of um our lecturers then who dealt with who supported this this family and yeah. also took them to therapy so for for a period of time they were both sleeping in different rooms and she had to lock her room door um, because she was frightened that he would come in. There's an enemy in the camp. <laughs> it's exactly. You know, so so with these things, you just therapy can help. So with him, you can tell that it was during his, his own started when he went to Iraq and um what he saw and what he did perhaps affected him. So that's a way, that's a way point to start from. For some people in the past, it might be something they witnessed, it might be a dead body that they saw which in future now is now giving them this flashback where anything they see 
reminds them of that image and they now start having those problems. So therapy can help in that in that aspect. Uh, for, for, but for some people, medication can just help to either relax their muscle. Uh, there are some medications they can have to relax their muscle um, so they can just calm themselves down and do some breathing exercise that, they, that you know that they can do. So there are different help, different help um, organizations out there that I mean with, with a click of the button with Google these days, you can you can even find the different type. If you put in the symptoms that you're having, it can even tell you what what it is and how you can where you can find help and how you can do with that. Excellent. Now let's just assume I want to I, I, I go to sim uh I visit my GP because I'm having some of these symptoms. How do I explain to my GP? Yes, I'm having some flashback. Yes, I'm feeling this way. That could mean anything, could mean a lot of other things. How can I give my GP an understanding that what I'm dealing with is anxiety? What are some of maybe keywords or phrases I can use to help my GP uh, understand what I'm dealing with? Because sometimes, it's not because there is no treatment for an ailment. It is because the person that is not well is not able to communicate to the doctor who is going to attend to him or her. So what are some of the things that I probably will help my GP quickly identify what I'm dealing with in case there's yeah. anything like that? Yeah, the issues with the professionals and the GPs um, they are, they, yes, they are equipped to identify these things. Now, for you that you maybe perhaps is trying to explain to the GP and you're unable to, just like pain, you're trying to explain a pain to your GP and you're, you can't. The GP would then ask you, um, okay, describe it in your own words. Just tell me where the pain is, how it's coming. So there, there are buzzwords that the GP will use that, that will prompt you to then talk about what it is. So with the anxiety, you're not able to describe it. You're not able to, to, um, to say how, how it is, but there are buzzwords that they will use because they're trained for those things. They will use those buzzwords um, to then ask you, okay, um, a certain time of the day or um, certain period, how does that affect you? Which you then begin to talk about these things and because of their, their limitations towards that, but they can also identify, but because of their limitation, they then refer you to the specialist that would then take up from there. So they would then tell the specialist, I have this client, um, this is what they are feeling, this is how they are feeling, and I think these are the symptoms of anxiety. Can you, I want to refer this, this patient to you. Can you please help me um, assess them further? So in that, in, in that period of assessment, that's when you then, because the GP will, will not be able to diagnose you. You have to go to specialists that will do that. Okay. So when the, when the specialist then diagnose, then assesses you and then see all those symptoms you're listing is, is what it is, then the diagnosis comes after that. But your, your, your first point of contact with you will be your GP is to just try and tell them what it is. And if you can't, they give you the buzzwords and tell, and, and they ask, they sort of pull the questions off you. Um, this, based this, on that. Are you feeling that? Yeah. Did you see the yeah. how does this yeah. react? Yeah. So based on that, question. they then refer you to specialist. Okay. Sorry. I have a question from one of our audiences. And the well, it's a question. It says, sir, why is it that elderly people tend to be more fearful, tend to be fearful more, than they were when they were younger. Would this be also a kind of mental illness? And if so, how can we help them to overcome the fear? Okay. Remember, um, as I said, they're, they're more fearful when they're older than when they were younger. At, when they were younger, when everyone was younger, they are very adventurous. Um, <laughs> you know, being as a young person, you want to explore, you want to see new things you know, the world evolved and you just want to move with the world. But as you're getting older, 
it gets to a point in your life where you then think, oh, the world is actually moving too fast for me. They now start feeling anxious because, they, they, you know, they're trying to catch up, which perhaps maybe they can't. Um, that can also cause a sort of mental health problem for some people. Uh, for some people, when they retire, you find that, that they can't really stay in one place uh, because maybe perhaps, um, you know, the world things are moving on and they're just there. They're, they're just not, there at all. <laughs> they're just there. They, they, they don't know how, what to do next and all that. That even brings in depression. So from one problem, it leads to another. So that's why for some people, they say when they retire, if, in, in the UK that I know of, I've seen someone of 71 year old. This is a woman who's retired, mortgage, everything paid for, kids are all grown. She has grandkids, but she still comes to work. But when we found out about this woman, she lives alone at home. So imagine that kind of person stays at home. And obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that it to get to a point where she then start feeling or falling sick because, yeah. you know, she cannot, you know, things are moving on. Exactly. So that's I think that's one of the points where um, when, when people are older, they fall into that prey of, of, um, of, of this anxiety and falling into this, even the depression, because things are moving fast and they are, they are not really not catching up because they are all getting older and slowing down in, in life. So for some, they use their grandkids to just support themselves. So that's why for some people, they want, oh, let my grandkids come. Let my grandkids come. <laughs> let them come around so I, I have people to, to, to play with. I mean, maybe, with maybe, my, I maybe my, my mental state is the same as the little girl or the little boy. So we can, we can all cope together, not with the adults where they're talking about this or talking about that, but we can't really relate. Uh, but maybe that's by the way out of context. But it, it's just about um, the, the things are evolving. Things are moving on faster than what than what they can actually meet up with, so which can affect their mental state. And environment, uh, sorry, uh, environment is another thing. So for, for an older person, um, when, when, um, when, they, when they move, um, ad adaptation to, to a new environment, it's quite difficult for some of them. So it does affect them as well. Wow. So this is uh, it's, this is getting interesting because when, like you rightly said, when you get older, what captivates your attention is different. Mm. What your even your thought patterns are different. The way you yeah, see way. the world around you are different. The way you see yourself completely is completely yeah. different, and some of that will manifest in form of fear or wondering or not sure. And then the older you get, the wiser you become. Some of the things that you will have in the past without even thinking now you're processing your thought properly yeah. you're considering all options and the younger ones around you can see that and think what's what's he afraid of why is he afraid what's oh anyway what is this cbt cognitive behavioral therapy what is that so with the cbt it's it's all about the skills and the tools to help you manage the symptoms that you have. Okay. So it, it, it's, it's, it's got to do with your cognition of things. So that's where this, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy. Okay. So the cognition of your behavior um, that will help you manage what symptoms you're having. Um, so they use that for people who are, for, I mean, as we all know, uh, their day-to-day -day life, um, to just help them to manage themselves in, in different ways. Now, like I said, everyone is different. So what works for me, not necessarily work for you. So you need to find out what works for you. That's where the, the cognitive behavioral behavior then comes in. So what works for me could be a thing of saying, um, maybe when I'm feeling anxious, I just need to do two pressure uh, push-ups or 100 push-ups or whatever push-ups. That works for me because my body then pumps up, the adrenaline pumps up, and that's fine. Uh, for okay. some people, it's just me, it's for me to think about the happy place. I just need to think about that happy place. Once I'm in that yeah. happy place, then I feel better. You know, for some people, it's just talk talk to someone. 
So once that once you start feeling like that, just go to someone, talk to someone, and you then you then feel better. So for different people, it's it's, it's different. And I think that is I appreciate what you've just said about talking to someone, because the society that we all live in these days is is we all seem connected, but yet we feel more lonely and more alone now than we've ever been. Yeah. So part of part of treatment then will be making ourselves available, giving people the giving people our time, our audience, so that people can share with us, knowing or hoping that whatever they share with us will not be on Facebook the next minute. Mm. Mm. Talk about the support that, that we can give to one another, especially where anxiety is concerned. Mm. Um, so, I mean, again, like you said, is, the, is, that, is that talking, um, is that trust? Um, I will use this may perhaps going out, out of context for, for, some, for, some, for some people, men i would say we're not known for talking about issues talking about problems um so we might be having um some personal maybe pain somewhere maybe in 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 some uh, personal areas private areas where we think oh i can't really talk about this because if i do maybe perhaps this will not make me manly anymore if i do and someone else finds out then you know I feel embarrassed, so I just keep it to myself. So th th people then start suffering in silence. So I think um, having that awareness gives people the, the the encouragement to want to talk about it because then people then are now aware of this mental health to say, oh, okay, um, I know about this thing and this person needs help. So because I'm aware of it, I can if I can give that help, I can direct them to where they can get that help. Um, again, things like, um, uh, I will use example, which I know this has come path in my line of work. Uh, for some men who are um, finding it, having erectile problems, they don't talk about it because these are things that they feel, oh, I'm embarrassed about this. But even if you watch the TV these days, there are treatments that they're offering, making them understand that, hang on a sec, this, you should not suffer in silence. You should not suffer alone. Because we're aware of this thing and we know that these things happen. So you need to come out and, and talk about it. You need to uh, go to your chemist and let your uh, chemist prescribe you this medication. You know, so it's, it's now coming. I mean, I watch TV, I watch the news. And even in the news now, you see things like that coming up. And you're wondering, OK, this, this wasn't the case some time back. Because now you're, you're giving people that, that hope and that encouragement that, oh, OK, if I can see it here, that means thousands can see it as well. That means thousands know about this. Then that means I can go out there to get that help. So that's that awareness and that talking, it, you know, it, it gives people that um, that confidence that yes, there's a, there's a solution out there. I have another question here from an audience. You know, one of the symptoms you mentioned earlier on, one of the physical symptoms you mentioned was hair loss that some people yeah. can experience hair loss. There's a question here, it said, if I've been troubled in the past that led to hair losses, um, without me taking any medication or visit any professional, professional, my hair has now grown back fully. And that condition of hair loss, can it come back again? Well, we, we just need to understand the hair loss not to be a, a symptom of um, alopecia. For a start, um, so if if your hair if you if you lose your hair uh, due to stress, well maybe perhaps it might be able to grow back, um, but if if it doesn't come back, I mean there are creams, there are other uh, solutions that people can use to get the hair back. Um, I'm not the hair specialist, but I, I, I've seen people use different products to try and bring the hair back. Uh, for some it works, for some it doesn't. If it's the alopecia, I've seen severe one that doesn't really come back. For some it does come back. So if it's stress, maybe perhaps yes, uh, they should give themselves hope, maybe to come back. 
you know, let's just go to the go and get some wig and men have well, wigs it's now. It's yeah, I see if if you, you must know? have the hair, then just go the wig route <laughs> and, and get some a wig. And see how that goes, but yeah. You know, now, I mean, for some people, it's for some, it's just natural. Like for some men, you see them, they have like some people have the afro, and as they get older, they start losing hair. So, yeah, it, it may not, it may not, yeah exactly. So, that may not come as stress, but it probably will come as, um, as, um, kind of genetics. It, you know, it might yeah. be in the genetics. So, yeah, the whole world, the whole world is in the midst of this pandemic called COVID-19 or coronavirus. Mm. Is, there, is there any possibility that the, the coronavirus could heighten somebody's anxiety level? It's, it, it's, it can and it has. Um, in the, I think I've lost the statistics regarding that, but apparently the, uh, it was said that um, um, more women are falling into anxiety than men, um, or they've, they've not studied, I've showed that during the start of this pandemic, um, it, more women, and even from the lockdown, uh, more women fell into the, the, the path of, um, of, um, of the anxiety than men, because uh, what they came up with was the women had to kind of homeschool the children. Um, and some of these women too have um, jobs. Some of them are actually single parents, so with, uh, that that situation made it difficult for them to uh, kind of have a balanced lifestyle. Um, yeah, I think it was. Um, if I remember, the statistics have gone off my head now, but I remember well. More women um, were having problems, and in terms of marriage as well, the 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 um, there were too much. There was strain in the marriage. And I think with, with marriage, I would, or with civil partnership, I would, to emphasize that one, if you look at it, we spend, well, if not most people, spend more time at work than we do at, at home. home. That's right. So if we then look at this pandemic now, maybe perhaps it's, that was what was keeping the marriage going. everybody into the house. Exactly. Because they had, because they hardly spent time together. So that's why things were, things were rosy. They, they didn't see much of it, you know. Yeah. So, but now that we had this lockdown, because even this lockdown now, if you hear in the news, there's a high rate of um, domestic violence um, coming yeah, out. Yeah. So yeah. Now that this lockdown is come up, there's there's so much tension, so much pressure. Maybe perhaps this is where we come. We talk about uh, where we're talking about the new things. So for instance, because this is new to everyone here. Um, yeah. Oh, who's going to pay this bill? I need to speak to my mortgage. A company to you know to take um to take a vacation on, on my mortgage. I need to hold on my these bills. I need to do this. This is stressing me out. Oh, these kids they're stressing me out. I never used to hear my child cry like this. Maybe because I, I wasn't at home that much. Oh, <laughs> the, the, the the blender is making too much noise. When when did this blender start making noise? Oh, um, there's a dog next door making you know all those things. You're now becoming aware of what never used to be a problem <laughs> to you. And all this thing can heighten your, your anxiety level, which then cause problems. So the irritability then comes in, which I talked about the, the, yeah. mental, uh, the mental symptom. Now this yeah. irritability might be maybe the partner asking you for something and you just flip. Oh, why are you asking me that? What kind of problem is, you know, just little thing. <laughs> or she cooks and he's like, maybe there's too much salt in the food or maybe there's no salt at all. Or maybe she was meant to give you juice, but she gave you water. Or, you know, just sort of little things. You just flip and, and all of a sudden there's a problem in the house. There's crisis. So those, those, those things, it, it just, it, it goes a long way. What those small little things that we never used to look on back then now becomes a problem because of everyone now stays at home 247. Um, you only go out when, you, when you're going shopping. But before then, all you can do is, oh, you pick up a phone. Oh, how are you doing? Oh, yes, I'm fine. Okay, where are you? Okay, I'll meet you there. You go there, you come back. Or you go to work, you come back. But now you have to calculate and plan your journey. You know, oh, I can't go out this day because of this reason. Or oh, I have to stay home. I don't like it. This is quite new to me. This is a new environment. This is a new uh, 
um, situation. So the, all those, this, these are the things that can cause problems in the home, and which is actually causing problems now in, in marriages, the lockdown, loneliness. Some people feel lonely because before they can go out to visit friends or visit, um, you know, loved ones. But now, because of the lockdown, they stay home. Um, they can't go anywhere. They, they can't go anywhere. The internet is not so much as good as, as seeing someone touching someone because as you know, some people, their love language is touch and feel. So if they can't touch to feel, they just feel, oh, okay, you know, I'm not that love, I'm not expressing my love. So all the, there's so much that can just spring up from this kind of things. Well, but in the midst of all of that, one must not keep quiet. I think if there's any message we want to pass out tonight, whether you are the one feeling the symptoms, or you notice somebody exhibiting or manifesting those symptoms, be your brother's keeper, be your sister's keeper. Let people know they can talk with you. We, we, we touched on something at the beginning, and before we close, I want us to, to revisit it. And that's the issue of stigma, where mm. people get stigmatized about, oh, uh, the leaf don't go all the way to the top and all of that foreign words that people use but those little words those damaging words actually stops people from looking or seeking the help that they need because yeah. they don't want to believe it. can you tell us more about the issue of, of stigmatization please so the, that issue of stigma it's um it's in, in a layman's term, again, it's like you are not, um, let me, it, it could be harsh, but you're not human enough. Um, that's why you're having such problems. You're not, you know, for instance, if you remember, um, let's use, you know, Africa for a start, because it's a different lifestyle in Africa than in, in, in Europe. So in Africa, something happens, they say, oh, come on, man up. Or, you know, you, you, you need to do this. You need, you know, you know. Why, why are you crying? You know, stop, stop being a baby, all those kind of things. Um, then imagine now you now start having those things and the people perhaps around you are the ones that would rather than say, okay, you know what? This thing you're going through is real. Um, I may not have an answer or have a solution, but I can say to you, maybe we should seek help. Rather than having such people around you, all you have around you are the ones who would tap you in the back and tell you, oh, come on, come off it. Those are child's play. You know, you, you, you shouldn't be going through those kind of things. Um, you need to, um, you know, sit up and, and buckle, up, buckle yourself up. So if, if those are the kind of people around you, you'll be forced to, to keep things to yourself because they are not helping you and you don't want to tell them because you don't want to feel like you're lesser of human, so to speak. So people then suffer in silence in such in such situations so i mean that that's where you then come to a place where um you have to know you have to seek help you just have to seek help um even if even if you don't have to tell anyone what you're doing or what you're going through but go through the right channel to seek that help because if you don't that's whatever that thing is will eat you so bad that before you even know what's happening you might find yourself in a place where you don't want to be. So you just, you need to seek help. Let people say what they want to say. Forget about what people are saying. Because at the end of the day, it's all about you. Let people say what they want to say. Because when you're well, trust me, there's some people out there who are also seeking for help, but they can't say. But when they see that you're actually getting that help, you'll be surprised that someone will come to you and say, listen, um, can you tell me what to do? Or can you tell me how to get this help? But don't you, you need to not worry about what people say um, and how they would view you and see you like ah oh, this person is not you know they're not tough enough um, you know to, to handle pressure or all those kind of thing. Everyone have their different threshold of pressure. Just a slight pain, some people can flip, but for some people it takes a high level of pain for them to then feel like oh I'm gonna say I can feel pain. So whichever your level is, you need to know what that level is and just seek help. Seek help. There's, there's, there's help everywhere. But just make sure you seek the right help. Like you said, go to your GP. 
tell them how you feel and let if they need to make the referral let them make the referral i appreciate that uh, what you just said about seeking help and being there for others but then there is the, the corporate side of things where people think oh if my employer finds out that i'm i have anxiety issue it might affect my promotion it might even have, it might cost me my job especially if you work in an environment that is somehow stressful well every work mm. environment is stressful to be truthful mm. but you, you understand what i'm saying mm. how can people in that position what can they do to deal with balancing with seeking help and the fear of that losing their jobs or not getting the promotion or not the, getting the recognition that they deserve. I, I think I think in, in that aspect, the, the, the awareness of mental health in this part of the world is becoming so, so um, vast to the point where um, if you're losing your job because of your mental health, you can actually sue your employer because that's okay. discrimination. Uh, that's the labeling that we're talking about, and that's discriminating. Um, if you if if you you don't have to tell your employer about your mental state, that is by law. You don't have to re, you don't have to report it to your to your employer. If you choose to keep it to yourself, however, you're getting your help. That is fine. Now, where that then works to um, to the advantage of the employer or to the or to the employee is the fact that where um, you go to your GP and tell your GP this is the problem you have, and your GP says, okay, you know what? Because of this, I think you need to take some time off work and I'm going to sign you off for two months or I'm going to sign you off for three months. You take that letter, you can take that letter back to your employer and tell your employer, well, I've got some personal issues that I'm going through and my GP has signed me off for three months. You really do not have to disclose what those things are. That's how good it is right now. Yes, it's some personal stuff I'm dealing with, but I've been signed off. Now, they can't force you to come back to work because your doctor has signed you off work. If they have any question, they can question your doctor for signing you off work. So take your letter and give it to them now. You can speak to your occupational health as well. Maybe with your occupational health, you can speak to them and say, okay, this is what I'm going through now. The occupational health, they are trained to deal with issues like this. They are not to disclose, those are personal issues, they are not to disclose to anyone else but what you've just disclosed between the, the, the you and that team. Mm -hmm. So you take it to them, uh, but the thing is, the, the, the fear is if people do not understand it about their job, that's where the problem then comes that they can't even go forward. So you go to occupational health and tell them, you've been signed off work because of this reason, um, and you do not, you know, you just want to leave it as that. So the occupational health will alert your your um, employer as well and tell them, okay, um, you've presented them with a sick note and um, it's quite personal and, you know, do, do you want to be off for a certain period of time. Um, on another note, where, uh, because I do, we deal with cases like this in, in, in different aspects. Now, there are people who work on the underground. And one of the problems that they have is suicidal ideation or suicidal attempt or suicidal yeah. intent. Now, it's in situations like that where the employee um, would not want to disclose their suicidal um, attempt to the employer, knowing fully well that they work in a, in a, in a dangerous ground yeah. as that. Yeah. Um, we as the as the professionals looking after this patient we cannot even go to the employer to inform the employer because that's how that's how private this thing is you don't go and start disclosing all these issues we employ we we encourage them that okay with this thing that you're doing because just in case you know there's an incident and you're having flashbacks or things like that how will it yeah. affect you so if you want to speak to your occupational health and tell them, and maybe perhaps they want to take you off that um, a risky department for a period of time and put you in another department, that's what they can do. They cannot um, take back your contract because you have a mental health issue. 
by law, they have to find you something within that same environment to do. So if your, your job is quite risky, they can help you and put you somewhere else whilst you're recovering. Because like I said, awareness of mental health is now is, is in place. So they cannot tell you, oh, sorry, uh, we can't employ you uh, or we need to terminate your contract because you have mental health problems. So people should understand this and they should also speak to the occupational health. Just remember that if you have any mental health problem, do not hold it back. Speak to your occupational health because where the problem lies is if you don't speak up and something happens, you then are the one held responsible because you never spoke up and you never yeah. told anyone about this problem because they would say to you, that is why you have this pe these people to help you. So yeah. speak up, let them know it is not their problem or it's not their duty to start telling everybody what the problem is. It's between you. If anything like that comes out, you can sue them for that because that's, that's all, that thing is private to you. So anyone out there listening, do not hold it back. Speak to occupational, speak to your GP. Get If you have to be signed off work for any reason, make sure you get that letter. Because if, you're, if you can't function properly, then you definitely cannot work properly. So That's get your right. letter, put in the right procedure, and just make sure that um, you, know, you get yourself better back on your feet before you come out to, to, to do your job. Excellent. As we close, I know there are organizations out there who people can approach for help. People like the, the Samaritans, people like uh, Young Minds and, and and things like that. Uh, can you just touch on, any, on one or two of them briefly, how the type of help that people can get from such organization? Okay, so, um, I mean, there, there's so many out there, or so many. Um, with, with Mind, uh, what they do is, I mean, they get the referral, like I said, your GP can also refer you. Um, so yeah. that's why we're saying, because some of these organizations, they don't accept um, uh, um, a direct referral. What I mean by direct referral is like you go into them. So they prefer to they prefer um, referrals from your GP or any professionals, maybe perhaps like from us. Uh, yeah. Because for some people, when they go to A&E, for those who were not um, fortunate enough to go through the GP, where... Yeah. The, the 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 problem took them to a point where they had a breakdown and they have to go through A and E. Yeah. Um, we have professionals there in A and E, the liaison, that they would speak to this individual, find out what the problem is, and also direct them or refer them to the right department. Okay. Um, so if you know th those are just some few basic. Um, uh, uh, turnout that you could go. I would just say, for a start, book an appointment and go to your GP, and your GP would refer you to where you need to go. Wow, how time flies! It's already an hour, mm -hmm. children. Can you believe that? Thank yes, it is. So much. It, it has been such an experience. It's a revelatory session, really, a, a, a learning point for us to learn, be equipped, to be, to be empowered, not just to know what to do, but to know how to help others. Because yes. if one out of every four of us has an issue, it just means you are just three, three people away from the next person. Yeah, yeah. Three people exactly. away from you are just you could be that fourth person in line, and so it's yeah. good to have this, this handy knowledge, and it's good to know that, irrespective of what the nature of the of the illness is, the anxiety, is the depression, is the uh, uh, stress, whatever it is, is the trauma, whatever it is, you are never on your own. Mm -hmm. There's always people out there who are willing, who are committed, who are eager to help you. There's always people around you who love, they love you enough to want to see you come through. Yeah. But it starts with you giving them the opportunity to help you. Yeah. And like you said, 
by talking to somebody. Don't die in silence. There is somebody somewhere just on the other side of the phone call, on the other the other end of a text message, who is going to be that person that will stand with you, that will help you, that will encourage you, that will support you all through. But it start with you talking. Wow. Thank you so much, Shadrach. It's been very, very, very interesting session. I appreciate Thank your you time. Me. I really would like to at some point bring you back for some other sessions because we could talk tomorrow. We still won't cover mm -hmm. enough ground. Yeah. Exactly. So, it, yeah. Yeah. So please keep your phone close to you because you'll be getting a call from me very soon. We need to do this mm -hmm. again. Thank sure. you so much. I appreciate your time. Uh, you. It's been an honor to have you. Thank you so much. Have a Thank great you. evening. You too. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye bye. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's our session for today on mental health conversation. Next week, we are going to try and bring this to a conclusion. But you never know. We may still have to go even further than that, but we'll keep you posted. I'm still working with some people to come and talk to us about trauma and post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. So be on the look I will keep you posted. Until next week, God bless you. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.